Hello and welcome to Not So Awesome Review. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be reviewing the first issue in the Batman Golden Age Omnibus, which I have right here, though lighting is kind of weird today, so it's a little bit shadowy, but anyways. Like I said, we're going to be talking about the first issue in here, which is actually the first issue of Detective Comics to feature Batman, which as most people already know is Detective Comics issue number 27. This is the case of the Chemical Syndicate, and uh, yeah, let's just get started here. There will be spoilers, though I feel like since this came out in 1939 that I, I think, you know, spoilers are okay. I hope. So, in this first issue, there's only six pages that actually take up the Batman story. Anyways, in this first issue, we get introduced to Bruce Wayne, Jim Gordon, and Batman, who are characters, obviously, have lasted since, well the beginning of uh, the series. So the issue begins with Bruce Wayne and Commissioner Gordon just having a little conversation when the commissioner gets a phone call that a Mr. Lambert has been murdered and his son's fingerprints have been found on the knife that killed him. Commissioner Gordon invites Bruce along and the two of them head over there as described in the panel. Yes, old comic books actually describe things that are going on a lot for whatever reason. I guess they felt they needed to back then uh, tell us, you know, Bruce Wayne and Commissioner Gordon are racing to the crime scene, or whatever it actually says. Uh, yeah, and this actually lasted until, like, what, the 80s? Somewhere around there. So it's something that if you're reading old comic books that you might get a little bit annoyed of because it is kind of repetitive when you're looking at the picture and you kind of know what's going on and you're reading the description. But for all these old comic books, I'm going to let that go because, well, I'm not going to complain about it just because I'm just letting you guys know it can get a little bit annoying it's there deal with it I got nothing else to say about that so when Bruce Wayne and the commissioner get there Mr. Lambert is denying that he killed his father and in the midst of the little mini interrogations going on one of the officers comes to Gordon and tells him hey we got a phone call by this other guy he's telling us that you know he found out Mr. Lambert's life was threatened and now he's kind of afraid that his life might be threatened because he works with him and Gordon basically tells him Alright, sit tight, we're gonna send police over, don't worry about it. While Bruce is kind of telling the commissioner, you know what, uh, there's a lot of excitement for me, I'm gonna head home, and I'll see you later. So moving on from there, we finally get our first appearance of Batman, who, if you guys know his first appearance costume, involves purple gloves, his ears look a little bit off, but other than that, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen it, and uh, it's a pretty decent costume, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's probably not his worst costume, it's... Yeah. Anyways, Batman gets there in time to find that the man who called has already been murdered and there's two people kind of ransacking his house, going through his safe and getting a paper out, which Batman is able to steal away from one of the burglars. And then this is where it gets, I'm not going to say dark, because it really doesn't have like a dark theme to it. A lot of people like to talk about how in the beginning Batman used to kill his criminals, he used to kill people and not care. And it's true and it's not true in a way, because they make it sound worse than it actually is. We do get the description of Batman putting one of these guys in a chokehold, uh, I believe they called it a deadly chokehold, and then he throws him off the roof of the house. The thing is, we don't get any kind of like, oh, he killed him, or he died when he fell, though by writing deadly chokehold, we're just going to assume that he killed him, I guess. But it's not kind of in a dark way it's just i don't know when you're reading it it just feels like he's doing what he's doing because he's batman and i don't know it just it it doesn't come off dark is what i'm trying to say even though he might have actually killed him it, it doesn't come off as dark as a lot of people try to make it out to be so anyways with the paper the batman was able to steal away from the criminals he's able to kind of guess what's going on and then we move on to our next panel where a mr rogers is gone to the chemical plant belonging to another colleague Mr. Stryker, because he found out that Lambert's dead and he's kind of worried about his own safety, so he wants to go over there to see him. When he gets there, he's meted by Mr. Stryker's uh, kind of associate, I guess, who ends up knocking him out, tying him up, and putting him in like this little place where this glass tube is going to come down and fill with gas so he gets killed, which I know it's, it's a little bit of overkill and it takes a while. And the guy doesn't even stick around to kind of watch it happen. He walks away, which gives Batman the opportunity to kind of sneak into the room, grab a wrench from the table, and dive in as the glass is encasing both of them. 
and just with a nice little smash he's able to break the glass and free both of them which if you think about it he could have probably done that from the outside too because it's the, gla the glass was shatterable from the inside it would have been shatterable from the outside though i guess if he did it from the outside he would have injured uh mr rogers which I, would have been good i mean if guy, the guy braced himself i guess he would just have glass on him so see he is kind of a nice guy anyways the henchman returns, sees what's going on, tries to stop Batman. They kind of get in a little fight, and Batman is able to kind of take him out, but at the same time gets knocked back, kind of away from view, I guess would be the best way to put it. After this, Striker kind of enters the room, and we get the reveal that he is the one who's been behind everything, and kind of, we get his motivation a little bit more towards the end. Uh, as he tries to take out Stryker with a gun, Batman shows up, scares him, and Stryker takes off Batman in chase of him, and Stryker kind of loses his footing and ends up falling over into a vat of acid, which is kind of what Joker's origin is in The Killing Joke and in the Batman movie, which is kind of funny when you think about it. You know, he fell into a vat of acid in the Ace Chemical Plant. This is exactly what happens here in the first issue. I don't know if that's any inspiration for the actual Joker that we get to meet a few issues from now in Batman number one, but it's kind of cool to see that that story exists from the beginning. Though if you look at uh, Stryker, you kind of get the sense that he doesn't look like the Joker, he doesn't seem anything like the Joker, and I don't think it was pre-planned at all, it's just what ended up happening and people ended up adapting that story into the Joker's origin, though you know, his origin is always kind of going up and down. We don't really know what's truth and what's not truth. I think right now we're at like three different Jokers and we haven't even gotten that reveal yet. So there is that, but it is cool to see that that story existed from the beginning. Afterwards, when Batman reveals what's been going on and why the fourth partner, you know, Stryker was killing the other guys off, we get our little ending with Bruce and Commissioner Gordon talking back and forward where Commissioner Gordon kind of tells him what was going on, and Bat and Bruce is, <laughs> I'm calling him Batman already, and Bruce is kind of like, oh, that sounds exciting and stuff, and Commissioner Gordon just makes a little joke like, oh, you know, he's a good guy, but he leads such a boring life, and then we get a reveal once Bruce goes back to his mansion that he is Batman. Um, so we're told that Bruce is Batman at the end of the first issue, which is cool. I... I would assume that people would have been able to guess back then that it was him, but maybe not. I really don't know. And when you think about it, unless you have like a young kid who's never seen anything Batman and you have him read that, uh, I, I would actually like to know if they can figure that out on their own right away or not. But anyways, it was a good issue. I do recommend reading at least Detective Comics 27 because it is his origin. If you're a Batman fan, it's worth to read. It's only six pages. It's pretty short and it's it's the origin why wouldn't you want to read it uh, I would like to see this story kind of remastered not that there's anything wrong with the writing or the art or anything but it would be cool to see uh, someone do kind of like an homage to it and just have a new like full 40 to 60 page story that it's this one but maybe in more detail redrawn but kept with the same style you know I want to see Batman drawn not the way he is, maybe a little bit more modern, but his costume and a more modern uptake. And I'm not talking about the Zero Year costume, or Zero Year in general. I just mean this story with a modern drawing of how he looks, if that makes any sense. Anyways, I'll hopefully be back next week with uh, I believe is Detective Comics issue number 28. I don't think uh, Batman issue number 1 what happened right after that. I could be wrong. I'd have to look through the book again, but I do recommend you read it. Uh, check out the Omnibus. It's pretty cheap for an Omnibus, and the paper quality is actually really good, especially compared to like the Marvel Omnibuses that are out there. It's also available in paperback, and there's also a few other, I believe, ways you can get it in these smaller books. I forgot what they're called, like DC... I don't want to say Encyclopedia, because that, that doesn't sound right, but... There's another version of these that you can get that are relatively cheap, though definitely recommend the Omnibus because everything is kind of printed in the order as it came out. You get your issues of Detective Comics mixed in with the issues of Batman, which I believe those are actually really long. So yeah. Anyways, that is my review for this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.